Hey guys, welcome back to Device Casting Couch. Today I will be installing Libreboot on my ThinkPad W500. This guide should also work for the T500 and the T400 as they're very, very similar to this. Now the first thing we wanna do is to disassemble our laptop. That way we can get access to the motherboard. And while this video won't be a disassembly guide, there's actually a really good write-up on the Libreboot website. I will link that down in the description below. And it kind of shows you all the screws you have to remove to get access to the motherboard and kind of a step by step on how you should go about it. The one thing I want to note is these older laptops have a ton of screws so make sure to kind of keep track of them. I did a little sketch on a piece of paper and kind of placed each screw kind of where at they were on that back cover. That way I can kind of keep track of them. There are varying lengths of the screw and you don't want to put one in the wrong area. So we almost have to completely disassemble this. As you can see, I had to remove the screen. I'm actually removing the Intel wireless card. We're gonna replace that with an Athros one. That way it has a open source drivers and it can be as Libre as possible in the end. Now once we have the motherboard completely out of the chassis, we can find that BIOS chip right above the RAM slots. And this next step I'm about to show is completely optional, but I chose to replace the 16 pin chip with a eight pin chip as my eight pin chips were 16 megabytes and will allow me to future tinker with OS boot whenever that comes out. Seems to be a lot of interesting stuff going on there. And um, I just used a hot air gun to heat up the chip and made it really easy to remove. Here I'm showing my Winbond chip that I'm gonna be putting in its place. And if you are gonna do this, make sure to know where that dot is, that dot singles where pin one is on the chip. And on the motherboard, there's actually like a little arrow and I want to say it says one next to it. That way you can line the chip up with the motherboard and make sure it's good to go. Now here I'll be using a CH341A programmer and I'll be hooking it up to the chip. I will say, I don't know if this is due to me replacing it, but my 3.3 volt modded one, which is the recommended and the most safe to use, is did not actually work for this Winbond chip. I'm not quite sure why, but I had a second five volt one that worked no problem. So your mileage will vary. I know a lot of people don't even like the CH341A, but I'm just gonna put that out there just in case that's what you're using. Now from here, we're gonna go to our computer and we're gonna type sudo flash from dash dash programmer. And we're gonna specify in our case, the CH341A underscore SPI, then dash W for write. And we're gonna point it at our Libreboot file. One thing that makes Libreboot so appealing is everything is already pre-compiled and ready to go for you. I chose to go with CBIOS with Grub first. Um, I eventually changed this to CBIOS with Grub as I found it worked a little bit better with certain operating systems like Fedora. Um, but I ultimately changed my mind and went back to TriSchool and uh, the Libreboot Grub picks it up no problem. When you're writing it, it will take a minute. Um, I did not do the read step here because this is a fresh chip, but it's always recommended to do two reads first and then compare them with the diff command. That way it ensures you have a good read and you also have a backup of your BIOS. Um, in this case, because I replaced a chip, I did not do that, but make sure to do that if you're keeping the stock chip. That way you can always go back to the Lenovo's BIOS and have the ability to change your mind later. Now we're just gonna unplug our CH341A programmer from our USB extension cable. Once there's no power going to the programmer, we can then remove the clip attaching it to the BIOS chip. Now from here, it's always recommended to test your laptop before you completely reassemble it. Just in case if something goes wrong, you can fix it without having to remove all those screws again. As you can see, when mine booted up, I have the Libreboot Grub menu, and we are good to go. This next step I'm performing is completely optional, and you do not have to do it just to have a Libreboot machine. Here we're gonna be doing the quad core mod. This will allow us to install any of the core two quads like the Q9000, the Q9100, and the QX9300, which is the fastest. I'm just gonna be soldering this wire from those two pins marked earlier. And I'm not the best at soldering, and if I was able to get it done, you should be okay if you're interested in performing this. I put down some Kapton tape to help insulate the rest of the nearby pins. 
uh, from any potential retraction of the insulation during the soldering process. This wire wrapping wire probably isn't the best, but it got the job done. Something like Kynar, which is a little more heat resistant, would probably be a lot better. Once I got the wire soldered down, I just put a little extra capped on tape to help secure it just a little bit and provide some additional insulation and protection. Um, that way, hopefully it doesn't get disconnected when we're using a laptop and cause some problems. The next step involves removing certain CPU pins that will enable this quad core to work. You could drill into the socket and insulate them, but these pins circled in red, we're just going to use some tweezers and kind of bend them back and forth ever so slightly. Once they, you bend them back and forth enough, they should just fall off and that's all we need. In this step, be very careful not to bend any of the surrounding pins as that could interfere with it sitting well in the socket as it should just drop in when installing it. If it does not drop in, um, I'd recommend just taking a light to the side of it and making sure all the pins line up in a nice row and you don't see anything bending. In the case you do bend some of the pins, just very carefully take your tweezers and kind of bend them it back in the right position. The CPU should drop into the socket when you install it. You should not have to force it. You can give it maybe a slight wiggle, but that's about it. If it does not drop in, take it out, reassess it, find out which pin is bent, and then you'll be good to go. Once I had this completed and installed, I actually ran a bunch of benchmarks to see how much better the quad cores were compared to the dual core that was installed. As you can see, they're about twice as fast, but the difference between the Q9100 and the QX9300 is very small, and if you just want to save a couple dollars, I would go with the cheaper Q9100. So this next step I'm going to perform is the cooling mod. I saw it talked about online a lot, but you'll see a little bit later, I don't actually recommend doing this because the cooling wasn't all that great. Here I was using a drill and I had a large drill bit, which was a mistake. If you do do this, use a smaller drill bit. It's a bunch of smaller holes are easier to drill and they also preserve strength a little bit better. As you can see, my holes kind of collided together and, and broke off where they were next to each other. So I decided to make one big square hole, which should give me even more cooling capacity. But you'll see later that wasn't the case. So I'm just scoring the plastic with an X-Acto knife and breaking it off with some pliers. It was actually easier to do it this way in my opinion. After I got this square hole about the size I wanted it, it was kind of rough so I filed down the edges just to make it smoother and a little bit nicer to look at. Now one thing I wish I would have thought about before performing this was to actually have my workspace set up to use a drill. As you can see there's a slight hole in my desk because I didn't have a piece of wood or anything behind it. I then learned quickly to put something behind it that way it doesn't destroy my desk even further. So learn from my mistakes, make sure to have a nice setup work environment, that way you can drill safely. Here I will be installing this wire mesh to help prevent any large objects from going in this hole and interfering with the fan. It's just this wire mesh on Amazon, I'll link it in the description. I'm just using some epoxy to adhere it to the back cover of the laptop. One thing to help make this mesh sit in there nicely is just kind of cut it to shape but also sand down the inside of the back cover we're attaching it to. This will make it sit nice and plush and have the epoxy and super glue adhere well. As you can see here's some pictures from the motherboard point of view and the rear of the laptop. I think it turned out okay. Now here are the benchmarks I was talking about. As you can see there's barely any difference and in some cases the together which is the normal is sometimes cooler than the cooling mod. So I don't know what's going on there. This was all tested in the same environment, but I don't think it's worth it. So I don't recommend doing this mod. So next I'll be talking about some troubleshooting tips. Now here is a docking station for the W500, T500 type laptops, and it has a serial port. And this serial port is extremely valuable when trying to diagnose what's wrong with your Libreboot installation. As Libreboot will actually output what it's doing when it boots up. It also makes it real convenient to just hook the motherboard up and to test it before fully reassembling your laptop. Now once we have this set up, we're gonna go to PuTTY and make sure we click Serial. And for me, my serial device is TTY USB 0 and we'll set the speed to 115200. Now from here, there's another setting I didn't do, but it's to log all the output. If you are having an issue, it is kind of hard to see what's going on because when you power it on, it's scrolling very fast. 
but when you log all the output you can open up the text file later and actually you know take your time and diagnose the problem and see what's going on in my case i was having issue with ram this is not anything new to me as you saw in my kgpe d16 uh, libreboot server but if it all goes to plan it should say jumping to boot code and you can actually see grub in the console and it should boot up into your operating system. The reason I like having access to the serial is I tested quite a bit of RAM and it'll tell you if it's having trouble with RAM timing. I found this crucial kit that's eight gigabytes and it works with the W500 and I'll put that in the description below. So next I'm gonna show you how to modify the Libreboot image to disable those power connected beeps and the battery low beeps. As you can hear, they're kind of annoying. Now to change these beeps, we'll have to clone the Libreboot repository. So we'll type git clone https colon slash slash notabug.org slash Libreboot slash lbmk. Now from there, we'll cd into the lbmk folder. And I was getting a little ahead of myself, but we actually have to make this. And that'll pull down all the core boot information, all the tools, and everything it needs to do that. This process does take a minute, so I will speed it up. Um, one of the reasons we have to make this is at least in Ubuntu, when you type sudo app install nvram tool, it doesn't have the tag C parameter. And we kind of need that to see the options it has and to change the options later. So that's why we're cloning this, so that way we can build that tool from scratch. I don't know why they're slightly different, but here we're gonna make sure we're still in the lbmk folder we just cloned. And then once it's finished making, we're gonna CD into the core boot folder. And then we're gonna CD into the core boot folder again. And then we'll do CD util. From here, we'll type CD nvram tool. And then we'll type make. This has its own separate make file. Once we do that, it's pretty quick and it'll allow us to actually modify our Libreboot ROM. To actually see the parameters that Libreboot has by default, we can type sudo dot forward slash nvram tool dash capital C, point it at our ROM file, and then dash A. Once we click enter, this will show us all the parameters that are in our Libreboot file, and we can actually change these with the next command. So now we'll type sudo dot slash nvram tool dash capital C, we'll point it at our Libreboot ROM, dash W for right. And in our case, we want to get rid of those power management beeps. So we'll type power underscore management underscore beeps equals disabled. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same command for the low battery beeps. Once this is done, we can type it in that first command and verify that these changes actually took place. You can also change other parameters like the sticky FN or the control FN swap, if that's your thing. So the cool thing about Libreboot is once it's installed and flashed manually once, you can flash everything else internally. So say you change these settings and you want to flash Libreboot so that you don't have those power management beeps or you want to swap control and FN, you just type sudo flash rom dash p internal dash w, point it at your Libreboot rom and it'll flash it all within the laptop. You never have to disassemble it again and it makes it really easy to either change settings or when a new version of Libreboot comes out, you can easily just update it. Another thing I quickly wanted to mention before we wrap up the video is the quad core will consume more power than the dual core. But one of the ways you can prevent um, your battery from being extremely shortened is you can get these Ultra Bay batteries and they slide in the DVD drive area and they're actually hot swappable. So say if the main battery's in but you want to take out the ultra bay and swap it with another one as long as the main battery is connected the power will still work or vice versa the only thing i haven't figured out is how to make the main battery the default so if you guys have any suggestions please comment down below so now that we've done all this we have a pretty awesome w500 it has a quad core eight gigs of ram we have an upgraded bios chip so if os boot or anything comes down the line that and squeeze a little bit more you know features and, and stuff in there we're ready for that and it's as free and open source and privacy respecting as we can get in a mobile workstation right now if you guys like the video please give us a thumbs up 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and consider subscribing as we have more videos planned for the future. Thank you guys for watching.